big welcome for John yeah. Cena. Thank you very much. Look at you right there taking on that ostrich. If you weren't going to be the polar bear, what other animal could you have been? Ooh, yeah. Well, you know, I was uh, lucky enough to voice Ferdinand the bull. The bull a, was a great. Lovable yet large uh, <laughs> bull, so maybe that. Uh, I've always thought I shared personality traits with a French bulldog. So a maybe Frenchie. A, maybe a Frenchie. A Frenchie is yeah, good. Heavy breathers, they fart a lot, you know. <laughs> we, we, sh we, share, we share a lot in common. <laughs> There's yeah. a cuteness factor. Oh, yeah, yeah that's good. Every, we were just talking, everyone is in this movie. Was there an, ever a point where you guys were together working on it, or was it uh, all so separately? So pros and cons of doing something like this. Right. The cons are you usually do your vocal recordings alone. So because I wasn't involved in filming the live piece of live action, I wasn't able to work with Michael or Robert or, or uh, uh, Harry or Carmel. But the pro is you can assemble an all-star cast. Right. So it, it would have been a perfect scenario for all of us to be together, but we all obviously have to work around everyone's schedule. And in doing so, we have an amazing cast and a beautiful movie in Doolittle. You've made so many great movies. My girlfriends always go train wreck. Everybody loves oh, you. And you. Have you kept up with Amy Schumer? Uh, you know, occasionally, yes. And uh, she's certainly uh, had a wonderful, wonderful career. And uh, occasionally we'll send each other uh, messages back and forth, just congratulating each other. I'm truly grateful. I saw uh, Judd Apatow in a weird uh, six degrees of separation the other day. And I always make sure to let Amy and Judd know that I'm forever grateful because it was that one role in Trainwreck that kind of gave me a reemergence or another opportunity in the oh, world of film. Really? I, thank you for your kind words about some of my movies, but some of them were not so good. And most of those were I in, don't the, know what you mean. in the early <laughs> stages Rockers of my was career. Great. But uh, a guy named Judd Apatow and a gal named Amy Schumer took a chance on me, tremendous. and uh, that kind of started this to where we are now. So I'm wow, forever grateful. I didn't know that was one. I just know that everybody yeah. loves it. J-Lo just came out saying that uh, acting, that movies were the love of her life. Where does acting fall in for you? Well, you know, it's. A, it, I always try to work on myself and kind of see where I'm at and what I enjoy and what my purpose is. And in boiling down all that stuff, I'm a storyteller. I love to tell stories and I love to entertain. And I just loved the element of telling live stories in the WWE. There's really nothing like being in front of a live audience. Yeah. But as I've uh, grown older, maybe a little bit wiser, maybe a little bit more banged up, uh, I realized <laughs> that I have found also passion in taking a script and making it come to life. It's just a matter of getting familiar. You know, before I was just put in an environment every night, a new city, tens of thousands of fans screaming your name. It's really, really Must special. Hate that. Plus Must I had hate that. I Must had hate that. I had ten thousand hours of proficiency in the WWE. I felt super comfortable. Yes. But I really wanted to thanks to opportunities like Judd and, and Amy and Tina Fey and Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell and the list goes on and on. I become more comfortable, more familiar, uh, more vulnerable, more brave, more willing to take chances, and that's what's led us here to do it. And that's it what Jay, exactly what she said yeah. about interesting. When yeah. they say that it takes 10,000 hours to, to become a master at something, you have, I, I would imagine that you feel master level at WWE and, and in wrestling. Will that always be a part of your story? You Absolutely. I'm yeah. a member of the WWE family always. And uh, I've said to many people that my role is obviously changing. I'm, I'll be 43 in April. <laughs> Um, what? Yeah. For three years young. Yeah, well, I'm very what? proud of that. It's, yeah. it's been really? a crazy ride, and I'm still here at 42, <laughs> going to be 43, so that's not I mean, bad. and in a three-piece suit, no, <laughs> I mean, like, and strong. button, and button. Well, and early. I love the <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a young person's game. The jorts are still at home. I still got them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, um, I'm, I'm very glad to be able to step back because the younger, uh, talented superstars need their time now. I've mm -hmm. had a wonderful 15-year run as a main focus in that industry, on those programs. I'm not saying I'm done. Yeah. I'm just saying it's time to invest in, in younger, able-bodied talent. I well, like that. Well, right we now. love you around here. Thank and you. we we love that you have found someone that you are loving on right now. We can you spell her last name? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> can you say it three times fast? Yes, I can. <laughs> We were trying to do it. We were challenged. Time. It was a challenge for us. We will we'll show you that later. What's the key to keeping some things private in your life for somebody who has to lead a public life as yeah. well? Uh, well, we all lead lives of sharing. We all have the ability. We see everybody's cell phone out. We all have the ability to share what we want. I think it's uh, like with anything. If, if you set a goal, stick to the goal. If one of your goals is boundaries, stick to the goal and don't be pressured. I mean, you guys are doing your job, so I appreciate you asking about my <laughs> personal life, but it's always easy for me to tell you, like, thank you so much for asking. I don't want to talk about that. And that's a respectful rapport. You were I right. think, uh, you were with, cute on the red carpet though with her. So I thought well, that was with, with anything you choose to do. I think it's, if you choose to do something, set up a structure that'll protect it. I have a goal for 
sharing certain things with everybody and keeping certain things for me. He handled that well. He did. And what well, I love about you asked a question it. on yes. how, do, how do I do that? And I think it's something that we all like set boundaries and abide by them. And the, thing, the, the great thing about you is that you've always allowed someone to be able to go there with you and respectfully you decide to or uh, yeah. not. I, I realize that we're all, we all want to have something to talk yes. about. Yeah. We all want to. And, uh, man, I'm so grateful for anyone out there who thinks that my life is actually interesting. <laughs> I, I prefer, I think the work is interesting and some, you know, people think that what I do are, is, is interesting. So that's a whole nother world in itself. So I can understand the intrigue there and I'm grateful for it. But I think they can also respectfully understand the fact that some things are I for like me. That. As we go out, by the way, Mario is supposed to be here. He's kind of scared of you, right? He I think he's he a little. Ring. Can think, you yeah. give a WWE shout out there the to Mario? Which camera do you want to say? Like, where are you? Let's sure. do this. Mario! Hey, man, what happened? Where are you, bud? <laughs> you know, you're scared. You have no reason to be. I'm like the biggest softie, the most vulnerable dude on the planet. We could have talked about life. We could have talked about purpose. We could have talked about resolutions or whatnot. I mean, it is the new year. We're surrounded by wonderful people. So, I mean, next time, show up. We'll have a chat. <laughs> Woo! Great job, John Cena! Wow. Check out John and Doolittle in theaters tomorrow. Yes.